Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview. My name is Joseph. Today we'll take you on the role of detectives to solve a problem that has confused many geologists. The question of why the Earth is missing 1 billion years of historical records. Before starting today's story, please remember to click the subscribe button and turn on that bell so that you won't miss more exciting videos to come. In 1869, geologist John Wesley Powell led a team of 10 to explore the Grand Canyon. Shortly after the expedition entered the Grand Canyon, the Chicago Tribune ran a headline claiming that Powell's team had been killed there, and there were no survivors. It was a great disappointment to many because Powell was known as the one-armed warrior and was a legend. He lost his right arm in the Civil War, but was a brave explorer that everyone admired. He led a team to explore landforms in the Midwest of the United States and obtained first-hand information that no geologist at the time could. His untimely death was a real shame for everyone. Yet to everyone's shock, a long-haired Powell suddenly reappeared in public three months later. It turned out that the team had not met a certain death, but instead the media had misreported it. Powell and most of his team were all safe, and everyone breathed a sigh of relief. But Powell, who had completed the expedition, was not so excited. He seemed confused because during the expedition he encountered a dilemma that he couldn't understand. This would be a dilemma that not only confused Powell, but also many geologists to come in the next 150 years up until the present day. Let's go back in time to July 1869, when Powell stood along the Colorado River looking up at the towering cliffs. He as a professional evidently saw more than our untrained eyes would. To us, the cliffs are a magical natural wonder. In Powell's eyes, they were the library of the gods. The colorful rock formations constituted the soaring, jagged pages of a great book. If you read this book line by line, you'll be privy to the history of the formation of the earth. However, when Powell glanced over a large piece of hard crystalline rock, he discovered something incredible. This rock's formation was different from the horizontal stacking of ordinary rock layers, instead displaying an unusual vertical arrangement. The rock consists mostly of granite, as well as leaf-shaped schists, Above the crystalline rock layer is a 305 meter thick belt of red sandstone, which presents a relatively normal horizontal arrangement. As a geologist, his intuition told him that this rock formation was abnormal, so he and his team began to measure its thickness. After doing so, he discovered the problem. According to estimates, this part of the rock should have been 3 kilometers thick, but it was really only 150 meters thick. More than 2 kilometers of rock was missing. So, what does this indicate? Generally speaking, the rock layers on Earth are arranged in chronological order. The closer to the bottom the layer is, the older it is, while the upper layers are younger. These layers are stacked, forming a sequence of old to young rock from the bottom to the top. Each layer is like a detailed record of time, faithfully detailing the history of the Earth at the time of each layer's formation. But the rock formations in Colorado are very strange. Between the ancient crystalline rock formations below and the young red sandstone formations above, there are more than 2,000 meters of missing rock formations that should have been present. It was as though the memory of Earth's history here was simply erased. Powell was very confused. Why did these rock formations that were supposed to exist disappear without a trace? This phenomenon was in fact discovered as early as the 18th century. James Hutton, the father of modern geology, also noticed a similar phenomenon of missing rock layers on the cliffs of the British coast, as he proposed the terms Hutton's unconformity to refer to it. Although Powell knew from experience that the gap between the old and new rock formations was nothing small, the classification of rock types and ages was very elementary in his time, so he could only name this strange phenomenon the Great Unconformity, leaving the problem to future generations to solve. Later, geologists determined the age of the rock through radiometric dating and found that Powell's speculation was correct. The oldest layer of the hard crystalline rock was 1.7 billion years old, while the youngest rock in the sandstone layer was formed 550 million years ago. That's to say, more than 1 billion years of rock layers is missing. Which means that more than 1 billion years of the Earth's geological record here is blank. According to geologists, Earth is 4.6 billion years old. So what kind of global super event could have happened to wipe out nearly a quarter of the entirety of Earth's history? What's more intriguing is that this stratigraphic unconformity happened just before another big mystery. 
the explosion of biodiversity on Earth 541 million years ago, also known as the Cambrian Explosion. During the Cambrian period 541 million years ago, records from animal fossils in rock formations show that most animal phyla appeared during this period. What's even more amazing is that this explosion of life occurred over a time span of 20 million to 25 million years, which is only a blink of an eye in terms of Earth's history. Groups of fossils around the world have collectively confirmed the spectacular explosion of innumerable species of animals. This factual evidence also confused Darwin, who wrote in On the Origins of Species, I can give no satisfactory answer. The case at present must remain inexplicable and may be truly urged as a valid argument against the views here entertained. But even today, more than a hundred years after Darwin's death, the Cambrian explosion is still a major mystery in the scientific community. And the same is true of the one billion years of absent geological records. As long as time has passed, there will always be traces left behind. What kind of natural or supernatural force removed the billion year old rock formation? This is also one of the great mysteries that the scientific community has so far been unable to solve. Last September, 152 years after Powell's discovery of this geological unconformity, the BBC published a lengthy article on the strange event, titled The Strange Race to Track Down a Missing Billion Years. The article quoted Stephen Marshak, Professor Emeritus of the Department of Geology at the University of Illinois, USA. He explains that at the center of any continent, whether you're in the United States, Siberia, or Europe, if you drill down far enough, you'll hit the two rock layers involved in this mysterious geological anomaly. So the geological phenomenon is very common, and it tells us that there's a very, very important story in Earth's history that we haven't understood yet. In fact, in the past 152 years, there have been many scientists who have been trying to figure out what happened in these one billion years. Various theories are emerging. There are three popular proposed explanations. Let's look at the first one, the snowball. Some scientists have proposed the snowball theory, inspired by the Greenland ice sheet. This huge glacier covers 80% of Greenland, with a radius of about 1.7 million square kilometers. Like rivers, glaciers move slowly. As the glacier moves, it gradually erodes away the surface beneath the ice. If this goes on for millions of years or more, it will eat away large layers of rock. Therefore, this theory proposes that the Earth was once like a huge snowball, and the erosion caused by this layer of snow and ice is similar to that caused by the Greenland ice sheet. Professor C. Brennan Keller of Dartmouth College and his team have been studying this topic and believe that this phase began about 717 million years ago and ended with the Cryogenian period about 580 million years ago. Huge glaciers have the ability to wash away layers of rock up to three to five kilometers thick, enough to erase layers of rock up to a billion years old. However, who removed the rock formations in the 30 million years from 580 million to 550 million years ago? The snowball theory, which looks pretty reasonable, can't explain the remaining 30 million years of absent geological records, and thus isn't recognized by everyone. Then let's look at the second hypothesis, the death of the supercontinent. This theory assumes that one billion years ago, there was a supercontinent called Rodinia, which included almost all of the continental plates on the Earth today. According to current research, most of the heat energy from the Earth's interior is released through mountains on the seabed, also called ocean ridges. So if there's only one supercontinent, then there would be very few ocean ridges, making it difficult to release the heat inside the Earth. So it would have been like the Rodinia supercontinent was sitting on a burning stove. As a result, above the constant pressure of trapped heat, Earth's crust began to rise, in some places by as much as six to eight kilometers. This is the type of movement that creates mountains. Then the supercontinent began to crack, completely collapsing about 750 million years ago. In the process of rapid uplift of the Earth's crust, one billion years of rock formation records were erased. This theory has an even bigger flaw than the previous snowball hypothesis. The biggest question here is whether such a supercontinent ever really even existed on Earth. Existing geological archaeology cannot provide a conclusive evidence in this regard. Then there's the third hypothesis, a confusion of gaps. This is actually a combination of hypothesis one and hypothesis two, where it's suggested that the unconformity is caused by the alternating actions of glaciers and plate movements. The glaciers eroded away rock while plate movements lifted rocks up, and in the process, some rock formations were destroyed. 
No matter how many inconsistencies or unanswered questions these three theories leave, they all consider forces inside the Earth as a cause. And they all hold the view that whatever happened, it was a gradual change over hundreds of billions of years that caused a mysterious erasure of Earth's geological history. So all three hypotheses can be grouped together into the same category. But there's another type of view that opposes them, and that is catastrophism. It's not a mainstream view that something weird happened overnight caused by some sudden force. To make things clearer here, let me first explain a theory known as crust displacement theory. This theory was proposed by American professor Hapgood in the 1960s. After research, he believed that about 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, the Earth's crust shifted as a whole. The North Pole has moved from the Norwegian Sea to what is now the Hudson Bay, Canada. Simply put, this means that the crust as a whole, the complete shell of the Earth, shifted a certain distance away relative to the internal structure of the Earth. Imagine our Earth as an orange. The crust is the orange peel. The internal structure below the crust is the orange flesh. The orange peel and the flesh are two separate systems, but are connected together by some fine fibers. Earth has a similar structure. This giant orange is constantly rotating. When a strong external force destroys part of the fibrous connection, the orange peel will move as a whole relative to the orange flesh. Of course, in the process of crustal displacement, the crust cannot be as neat and tidy as the peel of an orange, and neither is the material of the crust as uniform as the peel of an orange. In the process of the rapid movement of the crust, different sections of rock will move at different speeds due to differences in density, materials, and a variety of other factors. This causes the various crustal plates to squeeze and collide with each other. During this process, the layers of rock formations will be dislocated, with some being pushed further away and others even completely crushed. When the polar movement stopped and the crust stabilized, the rock layers that made up the crust had been reconfigured. Those dislocated parts, the parts that were crushed and disappeared, made up the missing layers that now puzzle geologists. What's worse is that the crustal displacement happened more than once. Professor Hapgood speculated that this happened four times, which occurred 130,000 years ago, 80,000 years ago, and 60,000 years ago, as well as 12,000 years ago. The crustal displacement that led to the extinction of the mammoth likely occurred 12,000 to 20,000 years ago, and is the most recent one. We've already made a detailed video about the theory called Shocking Truth of Human Origins was revealed in a book that the CIA banned for 50 years. If you want to watch, you can click on the link below. All of these theories are fascinating and offer a glimpse into what may have happened. Nonetheless, it gets our minds thinking that our history isn't a smooth, linear one, but instead something far more interesting. Alright, that's it for today's story. We'll see you on the next one.